So this is a type of soft shackle variation here where it's got just an adjustable splice here, like a whoopee sling with a, a buried tail. And so you pull that tight around a single strand of Dyneema that goes to what looks like a double overhand knot and just terminated like that, nothing fancy. And then this piece just slips right over it and gets tensioned down. Where we'll find out how strong it is. A lot of soft shackles are double strand here and double strand here. So you end up getting four X the strength divided by two because everything's back here at the noose. And what determines the strength is this has a bigger bend radius with two strands. And then with a button knot, the, uh, the top here goes back down and gets spliced in. So you have four strand diameter, not pinching that too tight. This one's pretend, uh, pinched pretty tight. So I'm gonna stick this inside of our puller here. Interesting. So Dyneema is very slippery and um, a double overhand is not going to hold. Do that. It, it basically slipped. Uh, it did not break at the noose here. You can see that that's uh, doing just fine. Still had life in it, but you'd have to have a knot that doesn't slip and I don't know what you would use to do that. As far as the number goes, We've got 2.92 kilonewtons. And this is a uh, 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter uh, diameter here that we used. So this is a soft shackle that has somewhere around 1.5 or 2 millimeters, depending how I measured this. You can see there. And if I switch it over to fractions, I was getting 1 16th, depends how you do it, or 1 8th if I go like that. Um, but anyways, it's skinny. You can see how skinny it is. And it is a button knot that you can see here. And the tails are not buried. And usually that really helps to have that buried. If this is trying to undo itself, which these are long enough it won't, then it's gonna generate heat up here that it normally doesn't, but typically it breaks right here. So we'll see what breaks first, if it damages the, the knot itself or the noose. Okay, so we'll just pull the head across like this. Zero five kilonewtons and uh, it broke the noose. So you can see right there, it broke the noose, and you uh, I can feel this is quite hot right there. Uh, you can see that the button head is a lot more tensioned, obviously. We took it up to about a thousand pounds of force, and the tails are approximately that long now. Um, that's pretty good for something that's smaller than a shoelace. And just for the data, 4.05 kilonewtons. So here we're going to test a soft shackle with an overhand knot. This is where you just splice two eyes back into itself, and then I bet you I can undo that. It's two eyes, and then you just take that splice that you do before you do any of that, and you... Uh, slip it in after you tie an overhand in it. So if you want to try to reverse engineer that, we do have videos about this. But it's a, the most simple form of soft shackle that you can do. The way it works is you have a bigger head to put this over. Um, sometimes you don't want a giant head, depending on what you're using this on. It can be bulky and be in the way. But it's about this big. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I guess I have a, a measurometer here. So without me pulling it open. Let's go to just about 45 millimeters right there. But as far as the diameter of material that we're working with, um, it's about, well, it's about five millimeters. So let's put this not in the line of fire 
and we're going to connect it with just two soft shackles because I two carabiners. Normally I get pretty careful about this kind of stuff when I get into bigger soft shackles. But locked, and this is our catcher for when things go flying. Rotate. In. And before we turn it on, and then you will zoom in here so you can see the um, the way that head goes. And then let's put a little pretension before I turn on the load cell. In. Like any good soft shackle, it breaks in the noose. The bend radius is determined based on how big of uh, this part is and how sharp of a bend that's going to be for this for this noose. And it doesn't break all the strands all the way every time. So you can see how it did that. And it's all squaggly. Check that out. And then the head is not, not collapsed, but it definitely is uh, flat. So let's show you the number. And we've got 15.45 kilonewtons.